Lord hath made, Amen. and let us be happy and rejoice in it. Amen. Our call to worship this morning will come from the book of Psalms, Psalms number 40, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 40, number 40, verses 1 through 5. Psalms 40, verses 1 through 5. Amen. Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry place, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my hand. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord, and the sound not a cry, nor such as turn aside to lies. Together, verse number five. Amen. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful words. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And now in the hands of our minister of music. Amen. Good morning, church. How are you this morning? Great, great, great. You know, it seems a little quiet in here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of
Spirit, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. That's in the New Testament. Acts chapter 9. Chapter 9. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Acts. We'll begin reading at verse 1. And saw yet breathing out threatenings and slaught slander against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. And desired him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them back unto Jerusalem. And he journeyed, sorry, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the priests. And he trembled.
found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. I'm going to stop right there. For a few minutes, I want to talk about grace and grit. Don't worry about it. Grace and grit. Charles Swindoll, in his book, Paul. Um, Man of grace and grit, he's the one who I basically stole that title from. He deals with the life of Paul in detail. He starts off really with this fellow we know as Saul. Saul was more of this Hebrew name, and uh, you remember Saul was a citizen of Tarsus. And it's there we start looking at this young man as he is aspiring to become a man that he feels God would be pleased with. While preparing for the message, I was uh, listening to Eddie Murphy. He was saying how a young man helped him a lot by the name of Byron Allen. Byron Allen is one of those persons I knew when I saw him and I really didn't know him. When I saw his face, I recognized him. He was supposed to be a comedian. But if you think of him only as a comedian, you miss him. But he's much more than that. This is about an hour. He's on the breakfast club. He was talking about a conversation he had with uh, Mrs. King as Martin Luther King was with her. Uh, he was saying that she shared some things with him. And he said, on a tender moment, she said, they didn't kill my Martin. Because of, because of his dreams. But they killed him because he was pushing economic inclusion. I'm going to say that again. She said they didn't kill my Martin because of his dreams. But they killed him because of his push for economic inclusion. What we need to understand is that we live in a world which basically tries to position uh, poor people, minorities, put them in a position to fail. It really doesn't matter what you do. If they have their way, you won't make it. She said in order to be what we need to be, we need to conquer four things. First, we have to conquer slavery. Then we have to conquer Jim Crow. And then we need to achieve civil rights. And of course, finally, economic inclusion. I know it sounds like Greek to a lot of you, but, but we need to look at it real closely because you see this, this matter of slavery is something that's in our history, but it's more than that. America was able to accomplish quite a bit because of all of that free labor. But you understand, when we were slaves, we weren't really their enemies. We were their assets. <laughs> they looked at us as being a possession. They owned us. <laughs> but then the Jim Crow system, once we were free, we no longer become uh, our, our assets. We became their competitors. See, now we are a problem because when we were slaves, they could tell us what to do. Hmm. But in the Jim Crow system, we become a part of the problem because we are trying to get the very thing they are trying to get. In 1866, they had a decree, and basically, you know, you're talking about the four acres of, or four acres of view, but really what, what the law said is that we had a right to have access to the same privileges that they had access to 
so that we can work our way up. Hmm. Just like all the others can work their way up. That yeah, yeah, understand. yeah. One of the, the problems we have, we are not in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on that you know nothing about. Right. And having the board meeting at IBM, you are not there. When they're planning the future of our country, you are not there. How can somebody like Donald Trump, as slow as he is, have some advantages that intelligent blacks don't have because he is included in that economic struggle? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I know you don't like this, it's a history lesson, but it's really, it's really very pertinent to our subject today because you see this matter of economic inclusion is something that's in scripture, it's something that's a part of God. That we try to make it know that, that God loves us when we're poor and God wants us to be poor, but in the fact of the matter is when we read scripture, God says he wants us to become all that we can be. be. <laughs> Seems like you're going to be a muscle sign today. But I've been lifting weights, so I'm ready. <laughs> Let me start with we're talking about the combat, the combat capability, the combat yeah, yeah. capability that, 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 that you have to come to grips with. There are many abilities and, and gifts and talents God gives us, but, but, but nothing is just going to be handed to us. There are some things we need to struggle for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. One more thing that's wrong with our young people, and then a lot of us older, we, we want stuff to be handed to us. It's all yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We feel like somebody over us. Yeah. We got a right to certain stuff just because we are who we are. We, mm -hmm. we think you're supposed to have a house, you're supposed to have a job. You, you don't want to go to school, don't want to learn, don't want to uh, equip yourself, but still you want the advantages of all of that. And, and basically, you have to come to grips with there are certain things in life you cannot accomplish unless you're ready to put forth the effort to do the work. I said on church last week, you don't do anything you really want to do. And don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. But one thing you can't do, you can't not study and, and still expect to pass the test. Folk, I'm not worried about how slow you are. I mean, some people learn slower than other folk. That's, that's, that's not an issue. You see, if I'm slower than another person, that means I need to get a head start. Right. 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 That means I can't, I can't accomplish my goal. Right. It just means I need a head start. I've got to study twice as long. i got to work twice as hard. But I still can't accomplish what God has to accomplish. Get away from this mentality of trying to get something for nothing. This matter of, of comeback capability is what I lift up with this man Saul, this Saul from Tarsus. Oh, we heard about him a lot. But Saul is a young man with a resume. We, we saw him first when he was holding the coats of those men who, who stole Stephen. But, 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 but Saul is more than that. When he says he's from Tarsus, it says something that he was born in a metropolis city. It was an area that's really one of the great cities of his day. It's near uh, uh, the sea coast, the Mediterranean, and, and he had a lot of traffic going through there. Paul uh, uh, was exposed to a whole lot of culture. He, he was a man of privilege. He had a religious and intellectual heritage. His dad was a prominent tent maker, and uh, he was a Roman citizen. Paul was born a Roman citizen. He was also the tribe of Benjamin, and that meant something because in the Hebrew culture, being uh, of the tribe of Benjamin means you were special. You see, a uh, Jew is special because that's the selected tribe from which Jesus descended. But when you look at the tribe of Joseph and Benjamin, they were special, but they didn't call them that. They uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, which is a descendant. But, but they were special because Joseph and Benjamin were the children of the mother that uh, uh, Israel loved. Yeah. Yeah. You remember he had two wives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all think of me like that. <laughs> Frank, he had two wives. Yeah. And, 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 and Leah was the one he didn't care a lot about because he didn't look too cool. But Rachel was a fox. Yeah. Rachel was the one he was working seven years from. His father-in-law kind of pulled the curve on him. And, 
He was in love with Grace. She couldn't have children at first, but she finally had two. She had Joseph, and she died giving birth to Benjamin. Yeah. And so these were special in the eyes of Joseph, and therefore it was special in the eyes of the descendants of Israel. And so Paul brags about being a part of the tribe of Benjamin. He is also a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, he was really looked upon as being really strict as it relates to the uh, religious side of it, that the Pharisees were the ones who kept all the rules. In fact, they kept so many rules, it wasn't enough, they make up some new rules. And they had a long list. It was like, uh, well, that's another sermon. But you know, you know, you know, a lot of church folk think that they're better than somebody else because they go to church longer. Used to laugh when I was a boy, you know, the Catholics we thought were the loose ones because they went to church every Sunday, but they'd also would play bingo and uh, take a little sip every now and then. Now, 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 Alan the Baptist took a sip then, but they didn't talk about it. <laughs> the Baptists uh, 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 thought they were better because they stayed in church longer than the Catholics did. The Methodists said they were better because they were quieter when they had church. Yeah. And uh, the church of God in Christ, they knew they were better than all of us because they were in church all day and all day. And, all day. <laughs> and they had the Holy Ghost. And so a lot of folks would think they were superior religiously to others based on how long they stayed in church and how many rules and regulations they kept. And so Paul was in this vein. But then Paul was more than that. Paul was an educated man. He, he uh, went to school under the Gamelian, and uh, he was exposed to all of these different cultures. He could speak Greek, he spoke Latin, he spoke Arabic, he spoke Hebrew. Uh, he was uh, a lawyer, he knew the law well, and he, 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 he was Pharisee from Nova Book, from Nova Law, and he knew how to argue the law. He was a lawyer, he was a young lawyer aspiring to be a part of the Sanhedrin Council. <laughs> I'm trying to see Tell you that Paul, let me see that Paul was on the who's who list. He was a man who was somebody. He was on his way up. Yeah, all right. And being on his way up, he was willing to travel and do whatever it took in order for him to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. Yeah. yeah in the midst of all of that, there's this group, this, this new group. This, they are called Christians, yet they're called. Uh, the, the, those who are in the way, the way, the, those who are traveling the way, these, yeah, these yeah. followers of Jesus, who Paul contends are impossible because they're following this, this false prophet, this fake teacher, this teacher, yeah, yeah, they yeah. ain't right, this fellow by the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Paul, being a man that's on his way up, yeah. he purposed in his heart to do everything he could to destroy that church. Jesus was already dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now his followers have come on the scene. Yeah. And he's willing to travel as far as the masses. The masses was like a hundred, over a hundred miles from Jerusalem. He's gone that far just to catch some folk who were in the way. Hmm. Uh, the, the Sanhedrin, that council, those uh, religious leaders, they killed Jesus, but killing Jesus backfired. Because when they killed Jesus, they thought that would destroy the movement. But instead of it destroying the movement, it, it just made him more famous. His followers claimed he rose from the dead. They didn't want to hear all that. They, they started arresting the apostles. Remember, they put Peter in prison. But when they put him in prison, the angel came and walked him out of the door. Yeah, yeah. And I opened the door with all his <laughs> And the Bible said when he was loose, it's still him going home and trying to hide. He went back and started preaching where they arrested him in the first place. And yeah, yeah. They backfired. And, and, and they had done all they were trying to do to wipe out this movement, this way. Yeah, and yet yeah, the yeah. way was still coming. Well, this young upcoming it, 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 uh, a lawyer, this young upcoming uh, fellow who really is on his way up, he said, I, I, I'm not discouraged. I, I'm going to destroy this movement no matter what it takes. I'm going to find every one of my can. Yeah. And lock them up and put them in. He, he was responsible, some believe, for having a lot of Christians killed. He was really looked upon as being somebody. Why I'm spending so much time on this. I'm talking about here is a young man who struggled hard. He studied hard. He went to school. 
he prepared himself. He was trying to be somebody. Here he is, a young man who was gifted, but he used his gift to promote himself. He was willing to do whatever it took and to take the extra steps in order to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish in life. He was not expecting anybody to give him anything, yeah. but he's willing to earn everything, and he is somebody that the society then and even now looks up to him. There are some folk who lack all now just because he's educated. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a good decision. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Byron Allen was saying education is one of the, the keys to us accomplishing what we need to accomplish. Now, you really can't be what you're supposed to be unless you get a good education. And that, that you understand if I'm not educated, I'm automatically locking myself out of certain situations. Yeah. Here's a man who organized, uh, in fact, he bought uh, the Weather Chapel. He, he has, he, he think he said he bought it for like $300 million. Uh, yes. Some surmise he's a big man at this point, but he was on the Freshers Club and he said something that I wanted to share with you. He was talking about he bought it for $300 million. Yeah, and they said, uh, wow, man, that's a $300 million. He said, $300 million ain't no money. And he said, oh, man, you've got to pay it. $300 million ain't no money. He didn't get the million. I said, wow, wow, they, they missed the whole point, you see. They, 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 at the one point, he's telling them, that's not a lot of money. And the next thing out of their mouth is, give me. <laughs> oh, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. Give me 50. That, that yeah, 300 million is a lot of money to poor people like us. But in the big picture, when you start talking about the, the, the economy of the world, yeah. the economy of America, that ain't no money. Yeah. When I have 300 million, ain't no money. You know that stuff you got ain't about nothing. <laughs> you know, I tell y'all, you know, y'all got a couple of million, three million, y'all think y'all something, y'all think y'all think rain on your parade. I'm not trying to rain on your parade. I'm just telling you in the big picture. You see, there's some things. I got enough money where I can live comfortably, but it takes more than that. Because it doesn't take but one decree, and you can lose all that. I wish I had a They can pass a law, and you're all messed up. Now, look, look up, look up, fire the alley when you get home on the internet, and just sit down and let him talk to you. Well, my brothers and sisters, this matter of this struggling that Paul did, he's willing to go the extra mile. Before I go to my next point, I think I ought to tell you, one thing I found out was followers of the devil don't mind going through extra trouble in order to get what they want got. Yeah. Church folk don't want to come to church, but the world don't mind doing what they need to do. Y'all get restless if we stay here more than two hours. <laughs> if they went to the club last night, I wish I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I didn't say y'all was in the club that night. I said, there was some in the club last night. All right. All right. We didn't get started good until after 12 o'clock. I wish I had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that the world doesn't mind doing what they need to do in order to get what they want to get done. And we as the, the saints of God, we as Christians, need to be willing to use that which God has gifted us with to accomplish whatever we can accomplish. He was talking about money. He said, money is easy. Anybody can make money. But the problem is we don't want to make money. We want to receive money. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I can't make that kind of money. Well, that's the problem. You don't want to make that kind of money. But he didn't start off making that kind of money. But Brother Dickerson, he talked about he went to the, the grocery store and asked him, could he work for him? And they said, you're 10 years old. I said, yeah. I said, hey, you know, we can't hire you. You got to be at least 16 years old. He said, man, how old that guy? He said, 16. He said, man, I ain't pretending. I know you don't put the eggs at the bottom of the bag. He said, but they told him we can't hire you because you're not old enough. And so when he went out to the parking lot, he saw a lady taking a basket and putting the basket back in the uh, contraption, and then she got a little tea. And when she got so many tickets, she was able to take another bill and get a dollar and take that dollar and buy some food there. Mm. And he said that's what he did. He started working in that parking lot. Mm. Just taking baskets back to that thing. Just mm. put them in, get money. He said, well, he kind of said to go hustle. <laughs> what are you trying to say? And I'm saying, it's not a matter of where you are. Do the best you can with what you have. Yeah. And expect God to bless you. Yeah. Uh, you may not be able to Being able to learn something. All right. 
dying in this day and time. Not only did I see this comeback capability, but this Saul had this condemned Christians. Uh, he was ready to condemn the Christians. Saul was an upcoming lawyer, I told you, who was a great debater, and he was looking to jump the Sanhedrin, but he was willing to do what he needed to do in order to accomplish what he needed to accomplish. Uh, Josephus said over 100,000 Christians were killed in the mass. But that wasn't enough for Paul. Paul said, I want to do my part. And so he goes to the authorities, that's the Sanhedrin, the, the rulers, religious rulers, and he wants favors. He wants to do it, and he wants to do legal. Let me just tell you, baby, there are some things that are legal that ain't right. All right, all right. There are some legal forces that want to put you in your place, but God has no part in it. And you've got to learn that God has the last word. Do I have a witness here? The Bible said that Paul decided he was going down to the masters and he was going to uh, take those folk and bring them back and put them in prison. He had a determined mind. He's a young, upcoming young fellow. He's going to do what it takes to put himself on the map. He's just a few steps from being a part of that Sanhedrin. I talked about the conversation with uh, Alan and with Mrs. King. He said something else about the conversation. She talked about the four Ds. The four Ds. The four Ds. The four Ds are what uh, the powers that be will do to you or anybody in order to get what they want and put you in your place. Hmm. So the first thing they will do, they will dismiss you. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will dismiss you. They, they act as though you are not all that anyway. They hmm. act like you're insignificant. You are there, but you know, you are, don't, don't pay attention to him. Don't pay attention to her. That's a nobody. They will dismiss you. Y'all better hear me today. Hmm. But then, after they dismiss you, you still, in their way, they will discredit you. Hmm. Yeah. They will discredit you. They will discredit you. They, they will try to put something on you uh, to make you look bad. Hmm. Try to make you look like you got a degree, but you didn't earn it. Hmm. You got a degree, but you went from the right institution. Hmm. You're doing some things, but you're not doing them the right way. Hmm. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Then he said they will demonize you. Hmm. That's what the good Christian folk have to do. The good, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I ain't gonna say something about that. They say that they will demonize you. They try to make it look like you uh, uh, a tool of the devil. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And then finally, they will destroy you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will destroy you. The followers of the false and fake teachers will. Do what they can do. And that's basically what they had done to the Christians. They they basically, these were followers of Jesus, and they dismissed him as being a false prophet, a, fa a false teacher, but, but he just kept on teaching, and that word kept on going. Then they wanted to discredit him. He's not from any school, he had really, he doesn't have any form of training. Uh, he doesn't deserve all the gifts that y'all are giving him. And then they demonized him by trying to make him look as though he's a false prophet. He's not from the Lord, he's from the devil. He's able to cast out demons because he's a demon himself. And then finally they wanted to destroy him, but they couldn't destroy him. You see, Brother Dixon, when they crucified him and put him in a grave, he wouldn't yeah. stay in the grave. Yeah. I wish I had a witness. Come on, come on. Yeah. Well, y'all uh, can look at modern time. That's kind of their immoral right now. To Michael Jackson, and look at what they did uh, uh, to the television day. Uh, they, they, they basically they start out by dismissing you, and then they uh, discredit you. Uh, uh, next thing you know, they demonize you. Today. You know, Michael Jackson became a pedophile. And, uh, uh, a man, he, he got to the point where what he was doing, they say, was molesting women. And then they get to the point where they can say a lot of negative stuff about you, and I'm not here to try to justify wrong or say what's wrong or not. But a certain question come to my mind: uh, Why is it that you can bring black folk to justice, but all those movie directors hmm. 
producers who was lying to women and told them they could get caught so they'd give them something. Why, mm -hmm. why is it none of them they come to, to justify? Mm -hmm. Nobody's calling their name. Why nobody is right talking about how they were mistreated? Why, why do certain folk get demonized and other folk get away with it? Well, it seems like to me you got to understand yeah. the devil is busy. He wants to discredit what you're doing. Hey, I didn't come here to get no history lesson. I came here mm -hmm. to live hear about the Lord, but baby, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what's true that as soon as the Lord decides he wants to lift you up, the devil decides he wants to pull you down. Yeah. He told Jeremiah in chapter 1, before you were born, I selected you. Before you were born, I told you you would be my prophet, my preacher. Before you were born, I put my hands on you. But before Jeremiah gets to chapter 20, Jeremiah said, I'm sick of this. I quit. He said, the false prophet, the liars, they doing good. They got a full church. And I can't even get nobody to hit me on the sidewalk. And everybody talking about me like I'm a jack leg preacher. These other guys, they're prospering and doing quite well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It seems like to me that, that, that uh, 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 I got the, the, the wrong end of the deal. I quit. I'm not going to preach anymore. Y'all know the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was ready to give up and to see. He didn't understand at that time, but all of us need to understand. The devil will come after you. The devil will come after you, but when the devil comes after you, you've got to be ready. He said, you, you got all these problems with the missile fighters, the, the waffles. What you gonna do when the horsemen come back? God didn't give him a pacifier. God didn't tell him it's gonna be better. God says, you think it's tough. Now, man, it's just getting started. Yeah. This ain't this ain't no this ain't no cake walk. You are not in a little little party. This ain't nothing that you do if you some kind of Johnny come lately. And I think that's what's wrong with too many folk in the church today. I don't think it's all a, 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 a party. You think you come to church to have your little praise time and we praise the Lord and we shout and we dance and if we go home high, full of the Spirit, but I came by to tell you, no, if you really got the Holy Ghost in you, He don't just teach you how to dance, He teach you how to walk. He teach you how to talk. He teach you how to talk. He don't teach you how to talk. He don't teach you how to put you in a strange place. He's going to put you somewhere where you get the notice of the devil. The devil ain't going to let you show out. He ain't going to mess you up. The devil ain't going to let you get a name for yourself. Without him putting you on a pedestal so he can shoot at you. You see, the devil doesn't try to pull you off your pedestal. He tries to lift you higher so you're a clear confident. He can start passing out the to everybody else. He can start shooting at you. He, 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 he thinks he's all that. He thinks he's better than you. He thinks he looks better than you. He thinks he has more than you. He thinks he's all that in a bag of chips. Well, you've got to understand how to stay in your place and understand.
time he's right there next to you, yeah. but sometimes you see him so far away you can't see him yeah. with a telescope. He's a sudden kind of Christ that he'll come up suddenly when you least expect him. You yeah. think you're getting away with it. Nobody sees you. You made sure you were in a strange car. You went to a strange neighborhood. You ain't in a restaurant nobody goes to and you're in the back in the corner with the lights out and you don't think nobody knows you are there and suddenly Jesus shows up. He, He's a sudden kind of Christ. The Bible said suddenly the master met him on the master's road. And when the Lord met Saul, he was uh, all messed up. He was all shook up. He was messed up uh, in that uh, he had all this courage. He had all of this bravery. He had been preparing himself all of his life to be what he thought God wanted him to be. And he's there trying to bring down this movement, understand it. He's not doing it for self grandizing only. He's doing it in the name of the Lord. This fellow Jesus is a phony. This fellow Jesus is a fake, and these followers of faith, and I'm going to put them all in jail. That the Bible said while he's on his way to do what he want to do, huh, he comes to this fellow called Jesus. Huh? But when he met Jesus, Jesus got his attention. Huh? Do I have a witness here? Is there anybody here know that Jesus knows how to get your attention? Is there anybody here know that Jesus can change your attitude? Huh? Paul went from, yes, uh, one to another. He was over here on the left, and then soon he twisted over here on the right side. Uh, he's here, and I'm not talking about politically. Eh? I'm talking about spiritually. Yeah, yeah. He thinks he's, yeah, he's working for the Lord, uh, only to find that he's been used by the devil. Mm. He thinks he's doing God's will, only to discover that the Satan has a hold of him. But the Bible said suddenly he met Jesus. But when he met Jesus, he didn't know Jesus was Jesus. The Bible said he was knocked down off his feet. Somebody said he was on a beast. I don't see that nowhere in Scripture. If he had a beast, I didn't see it. But I know he was knocked down to the ground. And he saw this bright light. This light was brighter than the noonday sun. That, that tells me Jesus must have been there. The light was so bright uh, that it blinded Saul. Uh, he lost his eyesight. Uh, and he's on the ground when he says, Lord, uh, who art thou? Uh, when he says, Lord, who art thou? Check the Greek. Uh, he's not saying, Jesus, who are you? When he says, Lord, uh, he's saying, uh, I don't know who you are, but I know you're supposed to be called Lord. Uh, I don't know what your name is, but I know you got some power to knock me down. Uh, yeah. I thought I was all that in a bag of chips, but I'm not even strong enough uh, to stand in this bright light. Uh, I thought I was somebody. I, I can speak all of these languages, uh, but no language uh, can help me right now. I, I need to know who you are. Uh, I've been to school and I'm educated, uh, but none of my education prepares me uh, for a time like this. I, I consider myself a prepared man, uh, but I'm not prepared for right now. Uh, who art thou? Uh, who are you? Uh, who has? the power uh, that you can knock me off of my seat uh, and just totally blow my mind. Uh, and I heard him say, my name is Jesus. Uh, wow. Uh, my name is Jesus. Uh, I'm the same one you've been persecuting. I'm the same one you've been talking about. Uh, I'm the same one you've been criticizing. Uh, I've been the same one uh, who you say is a fake. Uh, and now uh, you got to face me face to face. Uh, well, uh, Paul knows, uh, Saul realizes uh, that he's been uh, yes, uh, messed up. Uh, and now uh, he's meeting the real Jesus. Uh, and this Jesus is really not a phony. Uh, this real Jesus uh, is really somebody. Uh, I said he showed up suddenly. Uh, but then uh, even though he shows up suddenly, uh, he's been dealing with Paul all along. Uh, so he says, why keep ye 
he uh, against the prick. Uh, the other passage says, why do you kick against the gourd? Uh, you know the story. Uh, the gourd was that stick. Uh, it was flat on one end, uh, but it had a point on the other end. Uh, and the farmers uh, would have had a stubborn cow who didn't want to move. Uh, they would poke it with that stick, uh, trying to get him to go. Uh, but in the bottom of the carriage, or uh, uh, whatever he was pulling, uh, they put those sharp sticks uh, headed toward his legs. Uh, so whenever he would kick, uh, he was actually kicking against those points. Uh, he was kicking. And the kicking uh, was sticking in his legs, uh, and blood uh, was starting to come from his body. Uh, he said, why do you kick against the prick? Uh, you see, you might want to kick, uh, but the prick will stop you from kicking. Uh, you might want to kick, uh, but the gourd uh, will mess you up. Uh, so you'll stop kicking uh, and start pulling the way you ought to be pulling. Uh, I came by to tell you, uh, he says, uh, Jesus came to him suddenly, uh, but he really didn't deal with him suddenly. Uh, he said, why are you kicking against the gourd? Uh, what is the gourd? Uh, I contend uh, John God was messing with Saul uh, when he was there watching Stephen being stoned. Uh, and the way Jesus died uh, and the way Stephen died, uh, it messed with his head. Uh, he was kicking against the gourd, uh, but he said he's still an imposter. Uh, he watched a million Christians go to jail uh, and some of them were even lost. But he was still kiss, kicking against the gourd because he saw their faith and he saw how bold they were, saying, We are glad to be willing to die in the name of the Lord. He heard about the apostles and how the authorities mistreated the apostles, put them in jail. You heard about how they killed James, took his head off, seemingly he had a lot of that showed him these are no fates, but he was still kicking against the Lord. But finally, he met the man Jesus, and he found something out about Jesus. He's a God of grace, and he's a God of love. The presence of the powerful Christ melted Saul boldness. The power of God, of God, erased his superior intelligence and humbles him to a new way of thinking uh, and a new way of life. Uh, he found out something. Uh, there's something about this fellow Jesus uh, that's not false at all, uh, but he is real. Uh, and all through his ministry, uh, he kept saying, uh, I'm a great sinner. Uh, I'm a sinner uh, that labored uh, more abundantly than they all. Uh, you want to talk about messing up, but uh, I got a resume uh, of doing a lot of but you know what uh, Paul said? Uh, I don't spend a lot of time uh, worried about my resume uh, because I count my resume uh, as dumb. Uh, all that stuff I used to worry about uh, is not even worth talking about. Uh, and all the mess up I made, uh, not the elephants bring it to my mind. Uh, I don't let it bother me uh, because you see the God I serve uh, is a God of love. He's a God of He's a God that gives me another chance. He's a God that don't wipe out my sins, but he forgives me for my sins. He don't make me forgive, me, forgive my sins, but he causes me to appreciate his goodness and his dying in my stead. Do I have anybody here? Yeah. <laughs> 
years and pretty much on track on your agenda. But unfortunately, your agenda don't match up with God's agenda. Now is the time when you can make it right. Today can be your and Master's role. Just like Jesus met him, Jesus is ready to meet you. Right here, right now. Feel those who are trying to 
to touch her right now. I beg you that you would touch her today. Let your spirit touch right now. That's all you can. Let them feel your presence and your power in the name of Jesus. Those of you, those of us who know you, Master, those of us who have been walking with you for a while, help us, Lord, to be more conscious of your calling on our lives. Give us clear directions as to where you want us to go and who you want us to talk to, who you want us to witness to. You told us to make disciples, Lord. But we need your assistance, we need your help. As we strive to lead men and women, boys and girls, to your throne, help us, Lord, to be in your will. Help us, Lord. Say what you want us to say, first of all, to do what you want us to do in the name of Jesus. We have come gathered in the name of the Master that I would help us to be the church that you called us to be. You sent some kind of gifted folk here. Lord, we recognize a lot of gifts that you're not using. There's a lot of talents and skill in the exercise. There are a lot of people who are able to do a lot of work that they're being hindered from doing. So, Master, pray that I would just open up the gates, the floodgates, and let your spirit rule. And those persons who are willing to serve, you know, let us create the kind of atmosphere that they can serve without fear, without reservation. They can serve and allow your spirit to have when they can serve, not seeking self and I have a pleasure, but enable them to serve. Your name and the glory of the Lord and righteous name. Lord, we pray for saints everywhere and every dirt church is old in your name. And every person that's needed, needed. Touch, Lord, we pray that you touch right now. We pray for that little grandson right now, Lord. So you got a hold of this heart, but we know you're a heart fixer. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we say, Lord, touch that heart right now. Yeah. Heal those who Name we call the name, Brother Johnson, and so many others, Lord, from Sister Hill, all those yeah. undergoing medical procedures, Lord. Yeah. Touch them right now, Sister yeah. Hardy. Whatever they're going through, let them feel your presence, let them feel your the power, let them know that you're still a doctor. Yeah. 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 Never lost the case. Yeah. Oh, my Lord, have your way. Yeah. Lord, as we leave this yeah. place, help us leave better than we can. As we